Hi Libra, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your December 26, 2023 full moon reading for you. Now don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, and it gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much for doing so. Now let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. This is the fool crowning the reading, which is beautiful. Guide this reading. Ooh. We have the Page of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer coming in. This moon is in Cancer, so this moon will be teaching us a lot. This moon will also have us connecting with our inner child, angels, and spirit guides. We then have Aries Energy coming through. That's our sister sign. It can bring out the best in us. It can bring out the worst in us. So note that we might have a complicated relationship with Arieses in our lives, if we have an Aries in our life, or an Aries... Aries energy in our chart. So being aware of that is going to be super important. Justice, that's interesting. Justice is reversed here. We are represented by justice in the major arcana. So we can have a tendency during this time to get in our own way and be our own worst enemy. So just be mindful about that. Angels and spirit guides. We have the King of Cups reversed and we have the Three of Swords. So the King of Cups, again, water sign energy, Pisces, 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 there we go, Scorpio and Cancer. We can have a complicated relationship with water sign energy during this time. So know that it will teach us a lot, but maybe not in the ways that we would be most kind of responsive or like to learn these lessons. So just being aware of this is going to be super important to us. The Aries energy is in the upright position. So there is a sense here with the Emperor with Aries that this is going to be good for us. Like there's a good relationship with it, but always note that it can be complicated when it comes to Aries energy in us. It can bring out the best in us and it can bring out the worst in us. So do be aware of that. The three of swords is really starting to see and name our heartbreaks, our pains, our disappointments, things that have held us back in our life that have made it hard for us to move forward because we're looking here with the fool crowning this whole entire reading. And we're really seeing like, I want to leap ahead. I want to go after what I want, you know, there, and there's an air here that I can feel like, oh, I'm being super selfish, right? I, I want what I want and I'm going after what I desire and excuse me, I'm going to call, <coughs> I do apologize. And I'm looking at where I need to be for me. And we're going to think, oh, that's selfish. And it's like, no, it's not. We're looking at the bigger picture. And that's where that, that Aries energy comes in, that emperor energy. It's like, okay, listen, you're the ruler of your universe, whether we feel that way at times or not. And it's time to start to see things in the 3D. It's time to start to step back and look at the bigger picture. What do I want? Where do I need to be? We want to be, we want to be like a great emperor, okay? You know, like Marcus Aurelius or, or somebody who was considered great, wise, and powerful. We don't want to be Nero, who played his fiddle as Rome burned, who, you know, there's even propaganda that goes around that says, oh, he burnt half of Rome so that he could expand his palace. So here, it's like, how do I embrace my greatness and not be apologetic for it? And that's going to be a huge part of this time for us here, Libra. But we do have a tendency to get in our own way, to, to feel out of balance. And that feeling out of balance just makes you feel like, oh, forget it. Like, I'm going to just throw the cake on the floor because like a little bit of the icing is off. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's still perfectly good. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that is also going to be something very important for this time. It doesn't have to be perfect. This moon is very nurturing. It's very caring. It's very compassionate. It holds you in its arms. It's like, you're okay. Know that you're okay. So let's see what spirit has to say. And also know that if you're interested in winning a free reading, put a snowman in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced in a separate video on the 1st of January. So if you're interested in entering, good luck to you and don't be scammed by anybody contacting you. You will only know the winner through that video. Also, if you're interested in purchasing a private reading, a private personalized meditation or healing, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. So let's see here what spirit has to say. Here we have inspire. Inspire is reversed. So we can be feeling rather uninspired during this time, a little bit lackluster, a little bit overwhelmed by things. So just being my, ooh, sorry, just being mindful of letting ourselves be inspired, of letting inspiration come forward, of letting ourselves look at, at things in a way where it's like, I'm looking at the bigger picture. We're going to get very caught up in the details of things, also in the feelings of things. It's almost like, it's almost like things give off an electric current. Just be mindful about that because here we are to be 
we are to be inspired. We are to sit there and like look at the wonderment of of everything. It's like a beautiful finding a beautiful acorn. That happened to me yesterday. I found this acorn and I was like, oh my gosh, it's absolutely stunning. And I have it right here in the drawer in my desk. It's like it's so beautiful <laughs> that I'm like, okay, this this stays with me. But just finding those little beautiful things that everybody would be more than happy or everybody overlooks and letting beauty be with us, you know, and that's going to be a very powerful thing. It's going to be a very important thing. Our chakra energy in angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels this is psychic development this is the third eye chakra we're opening our third eye we're we're finding ourselves developing psychically emotionally spiritually and that's going to be something that can be very overwhelming for the majority of us you know we'd like things to be neat and orderly and categorized and here it doesn't fall into the category so connecting with your third eye is going to be very important connecting with your intuition, but opening up to what you love in yourself and really letting that connection with spirit flow, that's going to be a powerhouse for you. Our energy to be mindful of during this time, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. Here we have the two of wands. Be mindful. Certain doors are going to be opening to you or certain pathways are going to be presenting themselves. They're not necessarily right. Okay. It can feel flattering. It can feel like, oh, this should be right for me. This is, this is what I, I thought I wanted, but just be mindful, be mindful before you walk through the doors. Okay. So let's look at things astrologically as well as with the tarot. This full moon is at four degrees, 58 minutes in cancer. It's also at four degrees, 58 minutes in Capricorn. It is the third full moon in a series of six full moons that bring a strong sense of completion forward. So we are also having that sense of completion come forward. And we have with the fool here, we have that sense of new beginnings. It's also like, oh, okay, looky, the door is opening. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. The moon rules cancer, okay? So it just feels very comfortable here. And cancer is a very sensitive, sympathetic, empathetic, you know, caring, compassionate sign. It's also very cozy. This is a moon that we feel like wrapped up in a nice warm blanket, you know, sipping a nice hot cup of cocoa. It's just very cozy. It's very, it's very safe. So that is a beautiful feeling. There's also a strong need to feel nurtured ourselves during this time. We'll nurture everybody else, but we also need to feel nurtured. And that's important for everyone. So just know that that's going to be a recurring theme throughout this time. People want to be nurtured during this moon before it and after it. It's just it's just that feeling. The moon is in the moon is our emotional needs. And when that's in cancer, it's like it perfectly aligns, right? our emotional needs. Cancer is emotional security. So that's beautiful. And the sun is our economic, it's our financial security, and that's in Capricorn. So it plays off of that perfectly. It's like, okay, how do I have everything in order? How am I moving things forward type of deal? But also remember the sun and the, well, not the sun and the moon, but Cancer and Capricorn, they're sister signs. So they bring out the best and they can bring out the worst in each other. So if you feel sometimes like, wow, I'm on a roller coaster ride. Like during the day, I'm super happy. At night, I can be super angry or vice versa. That's because you have that energy around us during this time. And it can just be funny. You just have to laugh or else you could scream. So just be aware of this. There are three powerful sextiles happening during this full moon. We have the sun sextile Saturn in Pisces. We have Saturn sextile Jupiter in Taurus. And we have Jupiter sextile the full moon in Cancer. And these bring opportunities forward to us. We start to see there's new powers for growth. There's new power for determination. We see this with the emperor. It's like, okay, how am I moving things forward? What, what am I going after? Where do I need to be? How am I looking at what I desire? And we're going to see that some things are coming forward for our future. That's going to change the course of the rest of our lives. And we see that with the fool. It's like, there is something that we're going towards that it's like, oh, this is going to change the way I perceive the world or the way the world perceives me. But understand that expansion and caution are coming into play during this time. It's like we need to balance both. And if you want to go deeper into, you know, the astrology of it all, I have Pam Gregory linked in the description box below. She's absolutely brilliant. So check her out. We then have the sun trying Jupiter. And this is this is expanding our vision. This is our higher consciousness. So this is also really rather beautiful. So that's powerful coming forward as well. We're looking at things and we're looking at where do I need to be? This moon is going to teach us a lot, but we really think with the 
with the King of, of Cups reversed, our emotions can kind of be all over the place. That's why we feel with Justice reversed, we feel out of balance. We feel like, oh my gosh, can I do this? Can I move forward this way? Do I know what it is that I want? Do I know where it is that I want to be? And we have our heartbreaks coming forward. So because we don't feel emotionally stabilized, secure, grounded, we can feel all over the place. And then we'll see the three major heartbreaks and those can come up and I'll be like, well, that's why I can't do it. The emperor is going to be combating that, you know, and saying, well, that's exactly why you can do it. You know, if you only knew joy, if you only knew prosperity, if you only knew bounty, then you would have no place, you know, showing people how to grow or connecting with that growth energy because there'd be no need to, it'd all be perfect in paradise. But spirit is going to see here that we are, are taking our hurts and our pains and we're looking at them. It gives us a, a specific insight to our world and ourselves. And we're going to see ourselves utilizing that power, utilizing what we desire. Now, Capricorn is conjunct one of the four royal stars of Persia. And this is Fomalhaut. Now, Fomalhaut is at three degrees of Pisces, and it only moves one degree every 72 years. So this energy is with us for quite a while. It is linked to the Archangel Gabriel. We've talked about this before, but it's still powerful. It still needs to be noted. So the Archangel Gabriel is linked to learning. He is the mouthpiece of God. He is what can connect, you know, the dots for us. He is the spiritual teacher. He is the messenger of God. And that's important to know that we are going to be getting a lot of messages here. We're, we're learning. We're not the master. We don't feel like we have all the knowledge and that's because we don't. This is going to be a time of great learning. But also know that Fomalhaut in Persian tradition is also linked to serpents and to, and to dragons, which means that it is also linked to demons. So we have the highest energy vibration of an archangel coming in, and then we have the low energy vibration or the lowest energy vibration of a demon coming in. And there can be this push and this pull during this time. Do I go at what is easy, you know, the low energy vibration, or do I go at what is more complex, more intense? And so that's going to be powerful here as well. Now, Jupiter is five degrees of Taurus. Now, this is taking us a step further into our, our finances, into our abundance, into our security. So that's also a really good thing. Now, the North Lunar Node is in Aries and it stays in Aries for all of 2024. And we have that energy coming in and that's a big deal for us. That is a big deal. We have Aries right here. It's really amplified. It's really powerful. What we're going to see now and for all of 2024 is that we're becoming stronger. And I know a lot of the energy like that people are saying, it's like, I don't need to be any stronger, right? But there is a real sense of I'm claiming my power. I'm claiming my distinction. I'm knowing who I am. We become stronger. We become more resilient. We become more self-sufficient. We are breaking grounds in ourselves and we are stepping into our power. And that's the power that's coming forward. I know who I am. That's what the emperor says. I know who I am. I know what I'm ruling. I know what I'm going after. I know what I am building and supporting. And that is who we are. We are still learning, most definitely. During this time, we are absolutely learning. We are not masters yet. We feel out of balance. But there is this gumption, this like, you know, kind of like spit and vinegar going on where it's like, I know who I am. I know my power and I'm utilizing it. Now, it's interesting that Chiron is stationary because Chiron and wherever Chiron shows up in our chart is where our original wound is. Think of Achilles dipped in the river Styx. And we have our Achilles heel named after him because he was held by his ankle, right? By the back of his ankle. And that was his one weakness. Every other part of him, he was Superman. Like he was super strong, super, super capable. But he had that one weakness, which is our weakness for us as well, right? The Achilles tendon. And so here, we're told you have your one wound. And it's where Chiron is in our natal chart. And we are meant to become leaders of that wound. We are meant to, be, to master that wound and find the extraordinary in our lives. Because off of that original wound, is what all wounds will grow off of. Off of that original insecurity, that doubt, that fear, that chaos that's put inside of us is where all other wounds will grow off of. So I find that fascinating. So that's the three of swords coming in. It's like the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, the feeling that I'm not fully able to lead emotionally because I'm not fully secure in myself emotionally yet. And it's like, when will we ever be? We will wake up some days like happy, you know, singing, dancing, everything is great. We'll wake up another day feeling miserable, you know? And nothing has changed. So here, just be mindful, except for the stars, right? Nothing has changed except for the stars, except for, you know, solar flares or, or this or that. Things that we don't know about or things that we're not as attuned to. So here, or that our soul is attuned to, but we, we're not aware of. So here, just be mindful. 
be mindful because we're feeling off balance and we're taking it on ourselves and we're like, oh, what the heck is wrong with me? Look at this. It always happens this way, right? With the three of swords. It's always the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, the anger, the upset. And it's like, no. Feel your emotions, but do not let them rule you. And that's going to be really important during this time, Libra, because we're finding our balance and we're moving forward with the with the fool. It's like we're taking that leap of faith. We're being told, you know, we're primed. The energy that's crowning us is like, take that leap of faith, take that jump, go after what you want, open up that door. It's time. We're learning. We're learning. We're more resilient. We are, we're developing. We're going. Let us embrace this. Now, the sun is conjunct the dwarf planet Ixion. And this is at four degrees of Capricorn. And Ixion wants us to develop our authority, wants us to really follow our bliss, very much that emperor energy of this is who I am. You know, and we're learning it. We're learning it. We're learning how to connect with that energy, how to connect with that power. Now, Ixion is also helping us to simplify our joy, like to find joy in the simple things. It's like it doesn't need to be so complex. Scale it back, scale it back, find the joy in the simple things. It is also asking us, are the rules that we are playing by the rules that are right for us? Is the game that we're playing the right game for us? And that's a huge question. You know, something that I haven't always thought about, you know, is what is the rules that we're playing by, like the things that we're going after, the things that we're showing us as successful, powerful, this, that. Is, is it right for us? Is it where we're supposed to be? Is it the game that we're supposed to be playing? Now, Mercury squared Neptune. This is a big deal because this is fantastic for artistic endeavors, but it's also fantastic for inspiration. But it's the time of the grit in the oyster. So it's a time of that bit of sand in the oyster, that huge annoyance that makes something beautiful. And that's what you're going to find. You're actually going to find here, Libra, that because everything isn't perfect, everything isn't aligned, you know, just exquisitely, that that annoyance needs to be shared, it needs to be released, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be removed. And just like, just like an oyster, when you get a bit of grit in, when an oyster gets a bit of grit in it, it covers it with oyster mucus and it keeps on covering it with oyster mucus, which doesn't sound romantic at all. But what does it become? It becomes a pearl. It becomes priceless to us, to what is annoyance and a bother to an oyster. It's like, oh, this piece of garbage. Like, are you kidding me? It is priceless to us. So here, look at this during this time. What is annoying and bothering our present day self can be priceless to our future self. Remember to be a student of your inner child, to listen to your inner child, to let it speak, to let us connect with it. We're finding that we are students of our hearts during this time. Do we want to be? No, we want to be so logical, so practical that nothing bad can ever happen, right? That it's all balanced and harmonized and absolutely perfect. Thank you very much. But it's not going to be. It's going to be a little bit messy. And if we let our inner child, you know, kind of step forward, if we start saying, I'm a student of my heart, I'm a student of how I need to connect, how I need to play, how I need to let joy come forward, we're going to see, oh, it doesn't need to be perfect, right? I like it better with the fingerprints on, on the windows, right? I like it better when I, I'm coloring outside of the lines. It becomes more fun. It becomes more exciting. Now, Mercury is squared Mars. Everybody has to be mindful about this because we have to be mindful of our words. This can make us very sharp tongued. We need to take a breath. We need to take a beat before we respond because we can be biting. Oh my gosh, can we be nasty? So just be mindful about this during this time. We don't need this energy around us, but it can also make us very quick witted, very sharp minded and really enthusiastic. So that's, that's really good stuff. Pluto is squared the South lunar node. And this is a big deal. Now for all of 2023, this has been going on. Pluto has been squared the South lunar node. And this has had us choose, this has asked us to make a choice, love or fear. What have we chosen during this year? Victim or victor, what have we chosen? And we're going to see that. We're going to see ourselves stepping into our power and saying, what have I chosen? Did I choose the fear? Because it's not too late to choose the love. Did I choose the love? It's not too late also to fall into fear. So let's just be mindful about this. Have I been the victim? Or have I been the victor? Or have I been both? Because I know for me, I've been both. I've, I've, I've chosen the fear and I've chosen the love, right? And I, I've seen it very powerfully. I've chosen the victim and I've chosen the victor. And this is a time where it's not going to be balanced. It's not. It's going to be messy. It's not going to be just. Some things just aren't fair. They just aren't. That's life. Like, as harsh as it may sound, some things aren't ever meant to be fair. And we're going to see ourselves not being... We can see ourselves being drowned by emotions. Yes. But the king of, of cups... But with the King of Cups reversed, once we know, okay, you know what? Sometimes you can't balance things. Sometimes you have to feel one extreme or the other extreme. 
but I'm moving forward with my heart guiding me. I'm moving forward in I love you, in a love story. And it's not a falling in love story, which Libras, we love. We love a good falling in love story. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Does any sign love a falling in love story more than a Libra? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe a Cancer. Maybe. But no, you guys love, love, love a falling in love story. It's not a falling in love story with somebody else. It's a falling in love with yourself. It's an I love you to you, which doesn't seem as fun, but it's so much more rewarding. So just be aware of this. Okay. So let's see what the moon has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. So it's really interesting. We have very strong Taurus energy coming through. Our Libra energy is again reversed right here. We have the the full moon in libra reverse so just be mindful about that That again we can tend to get in our own way libra and it's a little bit frustrating so here we are assessing we are looking at things and it says prosperity lies ahead yeah look at the bigger picture look at the way that we're jumping forward what we're going after we're afraid of being called foolish or fool and and that's okay that makes perfect sense but don't let that fear stop you from going after what you want so it's kind of like feel the fear do it anyway. Know that if you take a leap, right, you're going to have gravity come into play and it's going to pull you back. It's going to have you fall. But whether you fall like a feather or you fall like a bowling ball, that depends on where you are in your life's journey and what it is that you're going after. So, so just be aware of this. It brings us then to be bold and make the first move. That's reversed. We're looking at our path. We're finding it to be different than what we had expected, right? It's that portal up in the sky. And so we're looking at, at things and it says here that we need to give ourselves permission. We need to give ourselves permission to follow the path that we hadn't thought we would be walking, to move forward in a way that we hadn't expected. And it brings us to a win-win outcome is forecast. It brings us to a place where, you know, reverse. Okay, so it's a win-win outcome is forecast reverse with protection. As we have the emperor energy come forward, it brings us to a place where we're questioning, right? We're questioning, can I move forward this way? Do I know what it is that I want? Do I know what it is that I need? And yet, I'm hearing, you know, a win-win outcome is forecast. Like you'll win, you'll achieve, you'll succeed. It might be a different win than what you had originally expected or what we had dreamt up when we were 15 years old. You know, it's always different than that, but you're more protected than you think you are. You're not just free falling. And that's important to know here, Libra. It brings us to your dreams need a practical plan. They do, they need a practical plan. And there's a sense here that also patience is needed. You know, your dreams need a practical plan. Patience is needed. You can't have it be perfect and that's okay, right? We're letting go of the, you know, the imperfection of, of being a perfectionist. And we're finding ourselves saying, I need to have patience with myself. I'm moving things forward. I'm going after what is needed. And I am finding that my dreams need to be woven into my everyday existence. They're not just going to magically materialize, right? I'm going to gently and calmly and patiently weave it all in together. And it's going to be a game changer. It's time to give rather than take. It is time to give of your energy. You know, it is time to let you have a connection to the universe, which is a give and take. But it's not just filling up, filling up, filling up. It's a healing and a, and a releasing, a healing and a releasing. And it's going to build you up. It's going to lead you to a place of gratitude. It's going to start opening up the doors. It connects you with your ancestors so beautifully and brilliantly that it can be astounding. You'll be like, wow, I didn't know I had that energy you know, in my line. And that's going to be a big thing. It's going to be a good thing. Look at the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. Because what are we trying to bring to fruition? What are we trying to move forward in? What are we trying to see? Fruition is coming, but like, there's a question of what do we want to build? Because we were looking at the heartbreak and the pain and disappointment. And yeah, that's super real, but that's not everything. And we can let our pain define us for the rest of our life. And that's fine. People do. But Spirit is saying here, how are we stepping into, how are you stepping into you? Your power, your grace, your determination, your focus. Look at the bigger picture and take aim. 
Because if we do that, it will bring to fruition what we want and what we desire in life. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. Not to be mindful of, but our subconscious spirit message. And that is blessed. It's that we are blessed. Libra, remember that. Remember that you are blessed. And move forward as a blessed being. You know, when you are blessed, you, you, you're already a step ahead of everybody else, right? You carry a special blessing with you. Just cherish that. Move that forward with you. This moon, yeah, it can be challenging, but it's just, it can be a little bit messy, right? It's making us feel too much. It's bringing too much forward. But if we say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed and I'm embracing love. I'm a student of my love. I'm a student of my heart. I'm a student of my soul. You know, all of a sudden those blessings just, just rain down on us. They do. They do. Our subconscious energy, our subconscious chakra energy is grounded reverse. This is the earth star chakra located six inches below our feet. We don't feel grounded right now. We feel kind of untethered, like, okay, where am I going? Where am I, what am I doing? We feel free falling. And we, we are a bit with the fool when we're taking that leap of faith. We're going after what we want. But we also have to say, who am I? You are becoming a student of our hearts. Our emotions can be all over the place. It's not going to be that smooth balance, but it's going to be, what am I fighting for? You know, an emperor is needed when you need to fight for something, when you need that protection, when you need that security, you know, when somebody needs to have that power, right? And so here, we don't feel grounded. Because are we grounded in our power? Are we grounded in ourselves? Do we even know what type of, of nourishment we need, right? Do we even know how to plant ourselves? So with grounding with, with the roots of the tree, you see that here, with the roots of the tree, you don't plant a cactus in the same soil you plant an oak tree. You know, when there are certain plants that do well in acidic soil, there are certain plants that don't do well in acidic soil, you need to know. And this is going to be a time where it's like, am I nourishing myself the right way? Right? And Ixion is bringing that forward, the dwarf planet Ixion. It's like, am I nurturing myself the right way? Am I feeding me? And is the game that I'm playing, are the rules that I'm playing by right for me? And we also have that with, you know, the North Lunar Node in Aries. It's like, is this right? Am I feeding myself the right way? And we might find, oh, oh wow, no, no, you know, I need, I need a different diet here. I need different nutrients into my body. And it can be quite literally, we, we are feeding ourselves differently, but it can also be, I need to slow down and look at my soul. And what my soul wants, it's different than what other people's souls wants. And that's okay. But I need to embrace what I love. And I need to embrace love and move forward in it. It moves us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that's the king of pentacles reversed. That's saying everything has to have a profit. Everything has to have a logical, practical meaning. And if it doesn't, it's awful. And spirit's like, yeah, I don't think so. Like, so just be mindful about that. Be mindful of people like that. Be mindful of ourselves being like that. So just be aware. Our subconscious tarot message is the eight of pentacles, uh, not the eight of pentacles, the eight of wands. Everything starts moving really quickly. During this time, subconsciously, we are, we're feeling like things are moving, gaining momentum, gaining speed. It's like, wow, wow, wow. So just be aware of this during this time. It's like everything's gaining momentum. Everything feels like it's going really, really quickly. And the outside, we can look at things and be like, oh, it's not moving as quickly as it feels like it's moving. But inside, it just feels like it's going so fast. So just be aware of this. Our subconscious Luna message is the end of a tough cycle approaches. That's reverse. We don't feel like it's approaching, right? We feel like we're still in it, in the void. We need to connect with the endless expanse of space, which I don't know about you, but when I was going through a really, really, really rough time, connecting with that energy was terrifying. Does the endless expanse of the universe terrify you or does it ground you? Because it can tell us where our soul is. It can tell us like how much we can handle. And we can use that as like, a way to judge things, a way to calibrate from things. So just being aware of this during this time is going to be super important. We're embracing the void. We're embracing the expanse of ourselves, the opening of ourselves, the moving things forward. And it doesn't feel like an end if a tough cycle approaches, but we're closer to that end than we realize. So just be aware about that. All right. All right, Libra. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace this full moon and ourselves. And know that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Libra. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. And have a blessed moon. And happy holidays. Bye.